Okay, today we are going to demystify aperture, okay, which is no small challenge. It is one of the most complex discussions. It's what students have the hardest time with. So, first off, let's look at changing the aperture. Uh, Nikon D5000 camera, there is a little tiny button right here, okay, and along with that button there is this reel. Okay, so if you hold that button down, and then wheel this, you can see the numbers on the right hand side are changing. The F is aperture. Okay. This lens goes from an aperture of 36 to an aperture of 5.6. It'll even go lower, it's telephoto. So what happens is if I collapse it and then relook at the aperture and wheel it down some more, it'll go all the way to 3.5. When you buy a lens, what I like to do is have a large variety of aperture. The more the aperture it seems, the more expensive the lens. Um, or Okay, there's a lot more factors to that, but basically, uh, it is standing true. Aperture is the most, probably most expensive, besides glass, okay? All right, we can look at here. Uh, we have aperture. It says now 3.5 to 5.6, and it doesn't mention anything about 32 whatsoever. Well, the reason for that is your lens is always kind of labeled the lowest aperture. So you always look for lenses that have a, a wide variety of aperture all the way going to 32. Uh, in this case, as a 3.5 when I have it dilated here, and then a 5.6 when it's wide cranked open. And that's what that means on the numbers. Let's look at another lens here, one that's a little easier to understand. Here is a 50 mil lens. Okay, on this lens, you can see that there is numbers 1.8 to 22. So this lens can only reach an aperture of 22, but it's the low number you're looking at. You want that to be the lowest. 1.8, I think, is by far the lowest that I've seen on a lens. All right, now let's look at the mechanics behind it. Let's move this out of the way. Okay, mechanics. Right now, this has a very large aperture, okay? Number-wise, it's large. So this is a 22 set right now, without even touching the lens. When I move this little dial, this is a 1.8. 1.8, 22. This is what's hard about learning aperture is the fact that uh, the larger the number is the smaller the hole. Okay, that's, that's so backwards about it. So, let's look at another mechanics of it. When I have it open like this at 1.8, look, I can see through it. Lots of light can go through it. Therefore, lots of light can get into your camera. When I'm like this, not very much light can get into the camera. Therefore, it takes longer to process it. Very fast to process, very slow to process. Can capture action, harder time capturing, capturing action. So, now that you know the mechanical side of things, how to change it onto the camera, and the mechanics of it here, let's kind of look at how we can learn how to use aperture in a setting like um, this, where I have three objects. What does that mean? What does an aperture have to do with three objects? All right, and that's in the next video. Alright, so, 
Now, how to use practical application of aperture. Okay, now I have three bottles set up. Notice they have labels. You'll notice that they have some kind of depth. Bottles in the front, bottle in the back. Notice also I have aperture set up so I can switch between aperture and the video camera so I can capture this. Okay, as soon as I line up the composition. <laughs> so let me line that composition up. And let me take a shot and show you Aperture. Now this is the Aperture software. Uh, not to be confused with what I'm trying to teach you is the Aperture lens. Okay, Aperture. So all right. Now what we have is uh, the three bottles. Um, I had autofocus on. And of course, being that autofocus is on, uh, it autofocused into the background. And now you can see that the bottle in the background, if I take a loop, I can read that a lot better than I can this one. Okay. If you look over here, I have an aperture setting at 5.6. Right there is the aperture setting. What I'm going to do is manually focus on one of the bottles in the front. When I say manually focus, I mean turning the autofocus on and actually going over to one of the bottles and autofocusing on the front one, and then turning the manual or automatic focus off, I'm going like that. Only because I do not have 20-20 vision, I rely heavily on autofocus. So, let's look at that composition again. Okay, now look at it. We have our loop, and now in the front, you can see that I can read the lettering. In the back, I cannot read the lettering at all. Again, over here, these have the same depth in the composition. Okay, I didn't change the aperture at all. I just wanted to show you that it is possible to focus on the back and get good results and focus on the front and get good results. But not both at the same time using an aperture of 5.6. Let me change the aperture. We're going to change the aperture to uh, f22. And I want to show you something real quick on the camera itself. So I'm going to switch back over to on location. Now, when I do change it over to an f22, or an aperture 22, notice there is this light meter right here. Okay. The light meter is saying, okay, well, you changed it to 22. Now, whoops, there is not enough light, therefore it's going into the negative, and it's dark. Okay, So what I have to do is crank back shutter speed. Okay, And as I crank back shutter speed, notice that line shrinks. I'll get into shutter speed in the next uh, session. Just for now, know that you know just by cranking this over without the top button, that's shutter speed. Okay, and what I'm looking for is having it at zero. All right, let's go back to aperture of the software and capture that. Alright, F22. 
you can now see that the bottle in the background is readable. One in the foreground, readable. Not as readable in the background, but still much better than the previous session, this one. And again, uh, with the compensation of having aperture cranked, making that hole smaller, so I'll go all the way up to 36, I have to now crank back shutter speed. There's a second factor here now. The factor is I'm touching the camera. So anytime I'm shooting with the camera, um, with such a shutter speed as that, I could potentially bump it. That, that is why you always tether at this speed. So here, I can hit capture again. Therefore, I'm not touching the camera. Shutter is open much longer this time. Much more time to calculate. Background, pretty crisp. Foreground, very crisp. Now, another thing I want to show you is the fact that um, lighting has now taken a dive. Um, I have a flash set up, in case you haven't realized that. Uh, here in the lab, I got the flash set up over on the right-hand side of the composition, and I got it remotely triggered. So, being that it's remotely triggered, you can see in my first composition here that with this being blurry, you can see the highlights are very nice and hot. Um, there's a great deal of dynamic lights hitting these little tiny bumps on the bottle. Okay, now let me show you the last one with the aperture cranked. Spectral highlights, very dull. Um, they're very exact. So I can definitely see the shape of the flash. Again, I'm going to switch over to the, the previous one. This one, not so much. You can't recognize the shape of the flash as much, okay, because it's blown out. So anytime I am using aperture, um, I, I do get crisp results via depth of field, okay, so bottles in the front, bottles in the back, both in focus, but I'm starting to lose dynamic lighting. Okay, now in the next video, I want to show you uh, what we can do with the aperture because of this fact, so that's in the next video.